Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 3 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I'll show you how to get a copy of Linux CNC from the linuxcnc.org website and how to burn this image to a bootable CD or USB thumb drive using software supplied with or available to any modern distribution of Linux. The bootable media that we'll create in this video will be used to install the Linux CNC controller on a machine that we plan to use for that purpose. Remember, I am neither a machinist, engineer, nor teacher, but a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. Hopefully, over time I can present enough material to prevent new folks entering the hobby from some of the pitfalls that I've encountered. With that out of the way, let's get started. My flavor of Unix that I like to run is Ubuntu Linux, and it's available free uh, from Ubuntu.com. Uh, so here I've uh, opened up um, Firefox and I've went to LinuxCNC.org. Now recall that there are two methods of downloading Linux CNC. Uh, your choices are either use the download link on the uh, web page or alternatively using the Z-Sync program. Now I'll cover both of these for completeness, but I recommend using Z-Sync to download the software as it will resume an incomplete download and verify that the file that you download matches the source file exactly. And this eliminates the second step of checking the sum of the file that you downloaded. So let's uh, we'll do the first one with the direct download. I will simply hit uh, download uh, link at the top of the page, and here it talks about uh, getting uh, Linux CNC and the different uh, methods. So we'll start with the normal uh, download uh, by clicking this link right here, and we'll save the file. And then uh, at least on Firefox, it gives you a notification up here of downloading and here it looks like it's going to take me about a minute 33 seconds but I'll speed the video up so here we see that we've completed the download now there are a couple of things that I want to mention about downloading through a browser first of all you know a browser is a stateless uh, connection which means that it, it it sends out the requests and hopefully it gets the uh, response and if it doesn't well then you send out the request again and the problem with downloading files uh, for the most part through a browser is that sometimes you know you can get corrupted data or incomplete file or something like that and although the browser thinks that it's completed just fine so if you download a file using your browser like we just done it's very very important to uh, check the integrity of the file to make sure that it it uh, is exactly the same file that they're hosting on the site for you to download. And here in section 1.3, it talks about verifying the image and it uses uh, uh, what's called a checksum, so an MD5 sum or an SHA256 uh, sum. And all this, uh, these uh, programs do is they look at the contents of the file and it generates a number. And if uh, that number matches the published number, then you know that the contents of your file is exactly the same as the file that they um, they presented for download. So I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to use the shortcut control alt T and then I'm going to go to the downloads directory and we'll do a list and here you'll see that I actually have two of them because I've d downloaded it once but these are exactly the same thing. So uh, to check it, uh, most Linux distribution have MD5 SUM and SHA256 SUM programs already installed. So to check it, we're just going to type MD5 SUM and then the file that we want to check, which in this case is Linux CNC-2.7 wheezy.iso, um, and we hit enter. And then after a few seconds, this number pops up. This 98CA07 blah, 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 blah. You see this number right here. If this number matches the published number, and if we look down here, here's the published number, 978CA07. And if those match, we know that our file, uh, our ISO file that we downloaded, is exactly the same as uh, the file that they hosted. So we know that we don't, we don't have any issues. Now, if this number was different, we'd want to reconsider uh, using this file because it could be uh, damaged or corrupt. And I would suggest in that case deleting it or uh, just downloading another copy. And of course the other option here that we have to check it is what's called an SHA sum. So SHA256 
sum and then the name of the file that we want to uh, check press enter this one takes just a little bit longer because it's generating a much larger checksum number and so if we look at the published number here compared to the number that we've got here we should see that they match and if they do again we're great now you don't have to run both of these you can run one or the other it doesn't matter so that's uh so that uh, concludes that part of downloading uh, with the web page. Now remember I told you that there are inherent issues with downloading with the browser, but these can be circumvented by using a program called Zsync. Now Zsync um, can be installed uh, either with your favorite package manager or from the command line. So I'm just going to install it from the command line. So we're going to issue a sudo, of course you know it's uh, super user do. Um, to do something, you know, whenever you make changes to the uh, computer, you have to use an administrative account. And we're going to use the program at install, and then the name of the program that we want to install. In this case, it's Zsync. And we'll ask for your password. Okay, and it's installing it. Now, Zsync. Um, pulls the file down uh, from its location and then compares uh, what the data that it's pulled down against the data that's up on the server. So, you know, this this kind of uh, removes the necessity to do the MD5 sum or the SHA sum because it does it for you. Now. All right, so now to download the file, we're just going to simply type zsync and then where the file is located at. So... Here we see it's zsync http colon slash slash www.linux.org or linuxcnc.org slash linuxcnc dash 2.7 dash wheezy dot iso dot zsync. And here I just copied this line right here. So when I press enter, zsync will calculate um, you know how, how long it's going to take and gets its checksum data and then starts downloading. So when this is, um, you see here that uh, it says it's got about a minute 35 um, or so to run. So we'll let this run through and then uh, we'll continue on and I'll speed this up. Okay, notice now that it's finished that it's verifying the download by checking the uh, checksum and it says that it matches and it's okay. So you see the difference here is that it takes care of all that stuff for you uh, and if there was some corrupt data, it would go back and pull the pieces of data that it was missing. Where if you were using the browser, you would have to, um, you know, do the whole download over again. So now I realize that uh, this was kind of a quick and brief overview of downloading the software, but I'm, I'm making a couple of assumptions here. I'm assuming that if... Uh, you're a computer user and Linux is an OS that you're comfortable with, then most of the stuff about installing Zsync and that sort of stuff will be second nature to you, plus things like writing to disk. But now that we have the um, software installed, let's talk about how we get this written to uh, a, a, a CD or a DVD or a bootable flash drive. So let's open up, our, we'll open up the downloads folder and here we see there's the ISO file that we just downloaded and we have uh, we have two choices if our machine that we're going to use for a controller has a CD burner in it then probably the simplest thing to do is to burn it to a DVD now Ubuntu makes this really simple I can do this simply by right clicking the file and say write to disk okay and it already knows the file that I want to and then I just insert the disk I think I'll do that once the disk is uh, put in, it should recognize it. Okay, so it recognizes the um, disk that I've put in there, and then I can just tell it to burn. Okay. Um, alternatively, there are several um, disk uh, authoring softwares available for Ubuntu and other Linux distributions. For example, if I... Uh, I have uh, available uh, Bersaro Disk Burner, um, and there are several others. There's, uh, you know, ones for KDE. There's all kinds, and like I said, if you use uh, Linux, then 
you probably know which ones are available. So in this case, I, if using Bracero, I would select Burn Image, and I would select the image file. Remember, this is Linux CNC Wheezy file. And then it sees the uh, disk already, because I've already got it in there, and just hit Burn. And, and notice that this image this uh, little screen right here it looks very much like the one that we uh, were using it's because in our case Ubuntu uses Bracero to burn image files anyway so all right so the other uh, option is uh, we don't have a CD player on our CD uh, reader DVD reader on our machine that we're going to use for um, our controller but we do have uh, let's say a USB and it can boot off of USB so and Ubuntu is very simple uh, there's a program called um, boot disk creator no startup disk creator I think yes startup disk creator that will create a uh, a uh, uh, bootable flash drive for you if uh, if it doesn't pick up the Linux CNC here in when you uh, start it up from the downloads folder you can hit other go to download select the ISO and hit open okay and then with your flash drive plugged in it will pick it up in a list down here so I don't have one plugged in but you would just select the one that, that you want to use and then hit uh, make startup disk so uh, you know the file is 1.1 gig so I'd make sure that I had at least a 4 gig um, flash drive in there and I don't even know that you can buy them that small anymore I think 8 or 16 gigs from the Wally world uh, are just as cheap as any of the other ones so that uh, is pretty much uh, all that there is to getting Linux CNC and downloading it and burning it to either a CD or a uh, flash drive so you pick your poison and and use whichever one that you want to use and I would uh, suggest hanging on to uh, this disk and then in a uh, episode here in the near future we'll actually install it on a computer on a controller computer and go from there uh, probably before I put out that video I'll do one for Windows um, same type of, of you know screencast here on how to download and and um, install uh, uh, or create the disk for Linux CNC so I'm gonna go back to the home page here I just want to reiterate that there are a number of uh, things that uh, you will find of use here from the home page uh, of course you have the documentation the documentation this is the current stable version this is what we just downloaded um, Linux CNC is under perpetual development uh, so if you want to see what the documents are and the one that uh, the the developmental version and we can talk about getting that or if you have a, let's say that you've inherited a uh, a machine that runs an older version of Linux CNC the older version of the um, documentation is here so you can either download it in PDF format or you can uh, read it in HTML additionally you have the wiki now the wiki like I said earlier this is like the wild wild west of uh, of things here because you know you have the ability to add any data that you want to to the wiki uh, it's not necessarily stuff that would be included with the distribution in terms of documentation and stuff like that but there is a lot of useful information in the wiki uh, take some time and and, and browse through it and you'll find some information there and then finally you know there's um, the uh, forms the forms are um, arranged by you know categories and, and the folks that run these forms these these guys are great these guys uh, are patient um, and uh, will help uh, uh, you know answer any of the questions that you know might arise specific to your situation because uh, I might not always be available I would encourage you to use uh, use these now remember when you ask questions try to include as much information as you can you know what is your machine set up uh, what is it you're trying to do what are you expecting but not seeing and it just sort of helps everybody you know answer the questions that you might have and there are other um, forms of communication we talked about mailing lists and we talked about uh, uh, the IRC I'd encourage you to check those out so at this point uh, I think that's all we have for this one here and uh, and and hopefully I'll see you again here in, in a while and 
And uh, thank you for taking the time to watch. I know these probably aren't coming out as fast as some people would like, but I have uh, lots and lots of things that I'm trying to do and, and uh, not a whole lot of time to do them all in. So other than that, uh, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, uh, share, and subscribe, and, and uh, tell your friends about it if you think it would be helpful. And other than that, have a blessed day.